So here we go. Fox News Alert now. Iraqi and Kurdish forces launching a major U.S.-led operation to take back a key city, Mosul, uh, from the Islamic State fighters. ISIS occupying that city for more than two years. They are dug in. Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, Fox News strategic analyst, with me now. And, sir, good morning to you back there in Washington. Morning, Some estimates say 4,000 ISIS fighters are there. They've been there for a couple years. They are ready and willing to take on this fight, and they are ready to die. How big is the challenge, sir? Well, the challenge is always enormous in urban warfare, uh, with its, you know, with, with the complexity of the battlefield, civilians in place. I mean, there's still up to a million citizens left, uh, Iraqi citizens left in Mosul. Not sure exactly how many. So it's ugly. It's difficult. Uh, but the real challenge here for us in our role uh, is to herd the cats. Because the future of Iraq has not been decided. Much will be decided eventually in Mosul. And you've got all these factions. You've got the Iraqi military, Iraqi police, Iraqi anti-terror commandos, Shia militias, Sunni Arab, local Sunni Arab militias. You've got the Turks in an oversight role. They're not supposed to be there, but they are defending the Turkmen's. What we've done is try to give them all, through the, working through the Iraqis, give them all a slice of the sandbox to play in. The danger, apart from the hard, brutal street fight against ISIS, is that somebody the Iraqi military could falter, the Kurds are doing well, they move faster, and this fragile agreement among the allies breaks down. So this is very complex, it's very deadly, um, and we don't know how long it's going to take. We have more than 5,000 U.S. military members in Iraq today. Um, how deeply are we involved in this operation? And certainly there's a risk of casualties here as well. Well, there's always a risk of casualties. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, one would hope they're, they're, they're minimal. But we are playing multiple roles. Obviously, air power, fixed-wing aircraft and Apache helicopters now going in. Uh, we've also got air controllers on the ground, special operators, trainers, advisors, planners. And that's really where we pull a lot of it together for them. That's essential. But the other role we play again is we provide a fig leaf for all these other elements, all these other players that say, well, we don't want to do this, but the Americans insist. And so we are the key clothespin holding the rag, on, all the rags on the line. Um, and that's a terrible metaphor, by the way. Yeah. But, but uh, listen, you have, yeah, but it's okay, yeah. but you, you have um, a, a toxic mix here. You have Kurds yes. on one side, the U.S. military, the Iraqi army, Shia militia, Sunni militia. Um, when you consider all of that, um, even if you're able to take out this town, and, and as you refer to these terrorists running for somewhere else, um, what, what happens to the state of ISIS, uh, even well, if you're successful? And, and if you consider whether or not uh, the Iraqi military, are they better today than they were five years ago or ten years ago? Well, they're certainly better than they were two and a half years ago because the previous prime minister um, had basically stripped out all the professional officers and put his cronies in, which is a key part of why they fell apart. So they're better than they were. We still don't know how well the rank and file of the army will perform in the street fighting. The anti-terrorist guys are pretty good. The Kurds are, of course, really tough. But, Bill, you raised a crucial issue. Even after the street fighting is done, after the last booby trap has been disarmed, however long that may take, then you get the big strategic question of what becomes of Mosul. You've got all these people, you have their chits on the table, and the Kurds don't agree with the central government. The central government doesn't agree with all the Iraqi militias, who certainly don't agree so with the true. Turks, the Turkmen's. And so after the shots, after the shooting's done, the arguing is going to start. And I frankly, I expect at least one more civil war in Iraq in the coming years. Iraq doesn't uh, it's going to be th this one is going to be bloody. Uh, Colonel, yeah. thank you, Ralph Peters, watching it for us. Thank you, sir. Good to get your analysis thank you, today. Thanks, Martha.